Howdy y'all, welcome back to another episode of the modded Minecraft stuff. All that stuff that we do in the modded Minecraft. How's everybody doing today? Doing okay myself, not too bad, everything is going pretty good. Um, what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about a, uh, a computer craft controlled uh, MFR spawner. And uh, that's what we're looking at in front of us here. If I turn this on, you can kind of see in there. We have a computer terminal here. Now, I did not do a touch screen on this because I don't use it enough to uh, spend the amount of time that it's going to take to make a, a touch screen. Because I don't know how to do that and I would have to look that up. And uh, it took me long enough to get this working because uh, I'm kind of a moron. But this works out real well we're going to take a look at this and we're going to take a look at a couple other farms that i did over in the farm area but i want to kind of show first that uh, i moved the spawner uh if you recall if we go if we kind of go up uh and if i can get on the uh elevator pad uh, if you remember it was over here uh in this corner i moved that and um kind of put it over in here embedded into the wall and I took the MFR spawner out of that, so I do have room to put um, more of the Draconic spawners in there if I ever get any more uh, uh, Draconium. I'm just, <laughs> I, I spent like an hour flying around in the end looking for one of those comets that are supposed to have a whole bunch in there. And uh, man, I didn't find anything. And the journey map doesn't really work in the end, so I can't even see if maybe I... Flew by one and couldn't see it, but it, it would have shown up on the map, but not none of that. So we moved that over here. Now this does cause one little bitty problem. Um, the problem with this is the little golden spikes in there kind of act like it would be me attack, attacking it. And I think I've talked about it before, that it makes zombies, excuse me, make zombies pop up uh, to, like, you know, call a friend thing. So the other day, <laughs> I was AFKing, and uh, I was standing like right here, and uh, I had gone AFK because there was something on TV I wanted to see, and I sat down, and I ended up going AFK for a lot longer than I thought I was going to, and I just, my guy was just standing here like this, and my son walks in the room, he goes, uh, how'd you die? And I was like, yeah, ha, ha, and he's like, no, seriously, you know, so I get up, and I come around and look at the screen, and sure, shoot, my guy is completely dead. Uh zombie killed me uh standing there and uh man i was pissed off but so what i did is i kind of added around um some of these uh interdiction torches from uh reliquary and what these do unlike the 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 magnum torch the magnum torch actually prevents spawn what these do is not only do they kind of prevent spawn but they also it's very small though it's only like 16 blocks uh there maybe it could even be eight but I'm, I'm not sure i'd have to go look it up but what it does is it kind of puts a mob force field so as if a, if i were standing here close to this thing if a mob were to try to come and get me or even spawn like above me uh it's going to push them away it doesn't hurt them or anything but it keeps them from getting to you so i have uh one in there I have one buried uh, underneath here to keep him from getting at me. Um, I think I have one down here somewhere also under the floor in case I, because I, I have a tendency to go AFK here a lot. And then I have another one um, like in here somewhere because they were, they were coming from back here over to, uh, to get me. So there's another one in here somewhere. I just don't remember <laughs> where it's at. But they're not too bad. The hardest part about making the, the uh, interdiction torch interdiction torch is the uh, the glowing water, uh, you know, because you need the the uh, vial of ordinary water, and then you need the uh, uh, glowing water. So it's not bad. I mean, once you get it set up in ME, it's it's pretty cool. But we have access to the uh, spawner from here. Uh, if I need to get down in there for whatever reason, I can just go in from here. I left this door like this 
just so I don't forget where it's at. You know, I, I could have just made it blend in with the wall, but I thought, you know what? <laughs> I'd probably, I'd have to walk through here and be going click, 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 click. Oh, okay, there it is. So, yeah, uh, I left that door kind of like that. So everything's moved over, uh, kind of the same thing. Uh, it just, everything's piped out. The, uh, the liquid experience goes into here, goes a bit over to our liquid experience area. And then over here we have a Signalium filter pulling out the uh, the items that I want, which uh, I left it like it was before where the other spawners were in there, which now it doesn't really need that because it's only dropping the pigman drops now. And I don't know why, if anybody can tell me why, uh, what the little glitch is that I always get these little baby pigmen in here for some reason. And uh, if I can get one, I can kill them. So I know they're real. But I don't know uh, what what causes that. No idea. Oh, some drops right there. Don't want to lose those. Got a ton of gold in there right now. Probably need to go turn some of that into diamonds. But what I did over here, I'll go ahead and turn on the night vision so we can see in here. Uh, this is the dark ethereal glass. You can kind of just pass through it, but mobs can't pass through it. Um, I just used stable ingots to make this, and I don't have the stable stone, but what I do is just use the gold nugget diamond. So basically it's nine diamonds per block, uh, stable, stable block. Uh, stable unstable block. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so what we have here is an MFR spawner. You can see there's nothing in it right now. Uh, I go and adjust the program a little bit so this will also emit a redstone signal and when there's nothing in there and shut this off. But uh, you know, I'm not really too worried about the power right now. But you can see it's got it's a network turtle because it's got his little modem on there. And you can see it's it's the modem is active because this is red. As long as this is red, you know your your modem is active. And on the inside, we have a uh, gassed safari ball, a witch safari ball, and a uh, pink slime safari ball. And uh, we'll show the farm where we got the pink uh, pink slimes at in a second. Well, a little bit more than a second, but uh, pretty soon. So what this does is uh, this little guy is sitting here listening on the red net network. For command, and uh, when he gets the command gassed, he's going to drop this ball down into here. Uh, if he gets the command uh, witch, you know he's going to drop the the witch ball, uh, and then of course the other one, the pink slime, and then uh, uh, final command is to to pull the ball out. But let's say there's a gassed spawner in here, and I tell it to drop the witch spawner. The first thing it does on each thing is it's going to uh, pull the ball out and then put the new ball in so you don't ever have to worry about it's you know popping out or anything or, or the it breaking now over here is our kind of our command computer it's just saying you know choose a mob spawner I didn't do anything colorful or, or weird uh, you're just gonna push the button of which one you want so let's say I want gassed and gassed will spawn in here and you'll notice this kind of lip um, they need this uh, what is this? Five tall to spawn. They need a five by five area to spawn. Uh, if they spawn back here, then the uh, the grinder wasn't getting them. So I added this lip in here to. Uh, this is just blocking our stairwell. <laughs> That's what this is for. Their stairwell is directly behind there. I'm thinking of actually about getting rid of that. I don't really need that stairwell anymore because if we need to get down here, uh, we can just elevate her down and then go. Uh, around the corner here to the mines. That's the the mine area. That's the wither killer actually right there. Not wither killer. Wither, wither killer killing area. So I may just close up that that whole stairwell because we don't really need that anymore. So gas will spawn in here. Um, pretty much it's it's only set up for these three uh, spawners right now. And if we look at the code, it's not uh, very pretty. But uh, what it what it do? Turn back. No, I don't want to terminate. Okay, it's terminated. Uh, let me see. This is edit startup. I can type here. Where's I'm at an odd angle on my keyboard? Oh, come on. <laughs> 
Come on. Come over here. Yeah, I can type today. Good God. What the? Okay. No. Okay. What is... Uh... Edit. All right, let me turn my keyboard here. Edit, start, up. There we go. Uh, so you can see that uh, I'm not going to try to explain all this. Uh, if anybody really needs this, just let me know and I'll, I'll paste in it. But uh, I'm sure there's probably better stuff up there already. But it's just the, the program starts. It opens the red net on the, on the modem that's on the back of this computer. It clears the terminal and then it sets the t uh, the cursor position uh, to the the top left, so the one one position, and then it just prints out our menu, and then it looks for an event, um, a key. Now this is where honestly I had the biggest problem. Okay, uh, what it's looking for is each key in computer craft actually like a one is actually a two so if i were to say uh if key equals keys dot two it would look for a one or actually if i just said uh equals two it would i wouldn't have to do the keys one what the keys dot uh one does is it's saying look for key the actual number one key uh so you can do this but you actually have to type out one two three you can't put the the, the number one there because it's looking for something different and it, and it won't work <laughs> and it took me the longest freaking time to figure that out uh, as I was trying to figure out how to do an event pull uh, so <laughs> you know what it's doing is it's just printing out to the screen that yes it's inserting the gas and then it's sending a message to the turtle uh, this is the ID number of the uh, turtle it is 13. Basically, it's the 13th computer, and you can get that on your computer or your turtle by just typing ID, and it'll tell you what the ID of that machine is if you don't know. And then I'm uh, printing or I'm sending it the message GAST, which is uh, then going to tell it to drop the, the number one slot. And then I'm just so it uh, shows that inserting GAST there for a little bit so you know it's doing it, I'm having it sleep for five seconds, then I'm clearing the turtle. turtle and then I'm running this program again. So it's just looping right back into it. And uh, each of these is just the same thing. With the exception of uh, 4. Which is uh, not having it put back anything. It's just removing. And it's doing it all the same again. So it's uh, it's not too hard of a program. Uh, let's go ahead and reboot this one. So now uh, I don't have to like hit enter anything. I just have to hit the button that I want. It's uh, saying it's inserting the gas ball. And now if we uh, wait a little bit, now what's weird with the gas is it takes a minute for it to kind of look around and see if it can uh, find a spot for them to uh, spawn. But once it gets going, it'll actually go pretty quick. But it, like I said, it takes a, a minute or sometimes more for it to kind of get a spawn pattern going, which is weird. Let's go in there and just make sure it did actually go in there. So you can see, yeah, it's got the gas ball now inside of here. And they'll spawn in here. You don't want to be in here because they will shoot at you. Uh, I don't think it'll damage anything except for you. But uh, I swear to God, they spawn in here. Come on. And this is what I'm talking about. See, I got a gas ball right here, or a uh, interdiction torch below here. Let's see what it does. And I have got this place lit up. There is no light level below 9 that I can tell in this room. This floor is so much carpenter's block now. And uh, it's ridiculous. But you'll notice there's kind of the fog right here. Now if you, you see, we go over here, you see it disappear. And then it's back. And then it's gone. And then it's back. And then it's gone. That's because these little holes that I put in the ceiling. Uh, these go up to the... It's actually nighttime. We could We could probably sleep. Those holes go all the way up, so this room has visibility. For, it has it's a clear shot up to the sky. So if we wander around, there's no uh, no fog. Turn this off. You can see there's like no depth fog because we're right above bedrock here. See one finally spawned. Actually, there's a couple in there. 
Uh, but over here, you notice it goes back dark again, but you'll notice there is a hole up there. Now, why is that? That's because we are directly below the damn spawner. Uh, I could probably move it over and get out of it because I try to clear up some of that, but um, I'm not too worried about it. But that's the reason why that's dark here and it's not over here. It's because this one is directly, if you see it, we're directly below the spawner and the spawner is blocking our uh, view to the to the sky. So you can actually hear them and they're getting killed now. They're, uh, they're dying. I haven't set it up to go into our AE system or anything, but you can see we're, they're, they're in there, they're spawning, they're dying. There's one right now. You can see his little square white butt in there. And then when we're, if we're done, we can just come down here and say four, you know, remove the safari ball, hit four. Damn hiccups. Seriously, what causes that? Eat real quick. So now it should be out of there. See, it's gone, so he won't spawn anymore. And uh, we could set that up to do at least 16 safari balls because the turtle has 16 slots. So you could put as many safari balls in here and pretty much just uh, loop it. It is two separate programs. Uh, this guy's got his program to send the message to the, to the turtle. And uh, now what I could have done is just left that in there, just walked in there, put the safari ball in. But, of course, that could be dangerous. So we just, uh, this way, I can just do it all from out here and not have to worry about getting shot, killed, poisoned, uh, whatever. You know, witches are kind of nasty. They don't, they don't really hurt that bad except for that uh, when they get you with the poison and the slowness and, and all that stuff. Their darn potions suck. So we've got um, the capability now to, to pretty much run anything we want out of that spawner. Uh, eventually I'll have this hooked up to send it all into our AE system. But I just haven't done that yet. Now I also have a couple new farms over in our farm area. So let me pause real quick and uh, when we come back we'll be over there. And we'll take a look at those. Alrighty, we're back over here by the farms, and I uh, just wanted to show this one for the sake of uh, covering everything. I've, I've really started to hate these damn robots from Belgraft. <laughs> they don't do anything that I want them to do. Now, what we have here is a harvester robot. I believe this is a harvester. Does it not say what they are? Nope, doesn't. but this one's supposed to be a harvester, and this one is a planter. Now, the planter does his job. He will come over here. To the chest, he will get himself out a, uh, uh, god darn it, nether wart. It's right there in front of me. It's that big word, middle of the screen, top, nether wart. And he'll come out here and plant them. So, if I were to turn this little guy on, okay, he he's on. And I give him some place to plant. You'll see he comes over here and he, he does his little job. He, you know, he picks everything up and... Goes to the chest and gets some more, and he runs out there one at a time, real slow. And I thought, great, this is going to work. And then everything grew up, and this little guy who's supposed to uh, harvest fully grown crops, he just sitting there. He just sitting there, and I've got him set to work in the area. I've got the map location. It's drawn out. It's just this little spot right here. And he doesn't do jack shit. He just sits there. So apparently. Nether wart is not a damn crop. Now, I would also like to make a rubber tree farm with robots, but the lumberjack robot doesn't cut down rubber trees. <laughs> Son of a... And I cannot figure out if there is a config file to... Uh, at least I didn't see one where there was the option to add items from other mods, one, or add crops, two... Uh, because this is a vanilla crop. This should freaking work. But uh, nope, uh, he doesn't do that. Now, I'm sure you come over here and get the wheat. But I don't need wheat right now. i got tons of wheat. i got more wheat than, uh, than I ever know what to do with. But uh, now we're not worried about spawns. Let's go ahead and sleep just so it's nice and bright. Real, real fast. All right. Um, what did I just get out of there? Come on, PowerPoint. Okay. Um, 
so this is our little farm area. I just kind of added a little fence around it so it looks like a little work camp, you know. Salt and just <laughs> I needed to put something around the outside. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So what, now what we've got here is we got two different little farms. Now, if you see this one, you'll rec if you watch the My World series, and I did one of these with uh, Batania flowers. This is using MFR, and it kind of does the same thing. Now, right now I have a grinder on here, and it's dumping all the drops into a chest. But before I had a uh, slaughterhouse on there, and it was pumping out this uh, liquid meat and the pink slime. Now, we need the pink slime for uh, the MFR laser drill, which I have not put together or anything. Uh, but I did need those slimes. I've got a safari ball of a little pink slime, so we can make those anytime we want. But what this does, this is an instant gratification cow farm. So, crap, I didn't grab any wheat. Um, let's go grab some wheat real quick. Uh, tell you what, let's run over to the Ocean Institute, drop off some stuff. I'm gonna drop off all these uh, this bait. It's not really bait. I got to turn it into fish food, but. Uh, you get the point. And then, uh, let's see. Let's go run back to the to the hizzy. Uh oh, no, I don't need to do that. So, if we grab some wheat, let's just grab. Uh, what do we got? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And then we'll go back over to the farmage. So, what we've got up here is we have a breeder. Now, the breeder, you just load this up with whatever it, it, you're going to raise. And, it, and it's a 5x5 five five area in front of the feeder, pretty much. So, this is going to grab all those cows. And you'll see, just a second, probably you know, all, the, uh, all the hearts. And down here, they're going to drop. They're going to instantly grow. Maybe. And then they're all going to get killed. And we're growing them instantly with the veterinary station over here. And we have zombie syringes. Now, side effect of these zombie syringes, just to warn you, is that every once in a while, a uh, zombie will spawn in here. And I don't know if it's turning the cows into a zombie or what, but every once in a while you get a zombie in here. Just not too often. But what it's doing is, uh, this is the same chest that we have our golden swords going into. They go down there. But this one is set up, uh, everything's set up so it doesn't pull out the wrong stuff. This thing is is filtered to, uh, well, I'm sorry, this is filtered to only pull out zombie syringes. This one pulls out the empty syringes. Uh, on the other side of this, back at the base, the chest is set up to to pull these out. They go into the system. And then it imports, there, there's an import bus on there that crafts these as it import, or puts them back into this chest. So it keeps a constant supply of these. Uh, the only thing I will tell you is do not make a recipe and leave it in your system for empty syringes. Because uh, any, it'll just keep trying to make them. <laughs> no matter what. Uh, it'll take all your uh, rubber sheets out of there. So don't... Uh, don't leave that in your system. And then over here, of course, this is just a grinder. Now, the reason that we can get away without a chronotyper, uh, if you're familiar with MFR, most of these setups are a breeder with a pen and then a chronotyper that pulls the babies out and pops them into another pen. And then you're a grinder that kills just the ones in that pen. Uh, with this, we don't have to worry about it. They just fall down. We don't have to build the extra machine. And uh, since the area of the grinder is only a uh, five by five by four, it doesn't get the cows that are up here. It only gets the ones that are in the uh, the bottom area. So we save ourselves having to power and use a, uh, a third machine. Now you don't need this veterinary station. This is uh, the only reason I added this in is I didn't want to wait ten minutes for cows to spawn to uh, to get the pink slime. So that's what this is. So this is just kind of an instant gratification cow farm. Uh, they're bred, they drop, they grow, they die. And you get your, your resources out of it. 
Um, if you want this to be constant, of course, you could have your, however you want to do it, just have this constantly supplied with wheat. I just leave it like this because I don't really need tons of leather. Leather, I probably got 500 or so in storage, but uh, we're good on that. Now, over here, we have our little wolf farm. This uses two turtles, and they have, uh, if I can aim on them here, they have shears in slot one, and uh, they're not, their program is not set up to run on startup. Now, eventually, what I want to do, and this will be down the road, um, I want to make a control room where I have one computer where I can control, and I've got to do some testing with the ability of RedNet and uh, Redstone with computers, but I want to have computers hooked up on pretty much everything, everything that we have to be able to turn it on and turn it off, all for one master control room uh, remotely using RedNet. And uh, this will be one of the first things that I do. So I can turn this on and off. We don't need that much wool, but we probably got close to 2,000 wool in the system. But what this one does, if we look at, I think it's called Shear. A uh, real simple kind of program. Uh, this is an advanced one. I can't scroll. Um, it's just, the main one is uh, while true do. And it's going to go through and it's going to shear in front of it. It's going to turn. It's going to shear this one. It's going to turn. It's going to shear that one. Uh, it's going to turn again, shear this one. And then it's going to come back here and shear this one. But what it does first, uh, well, it's going to, it's going to, hold on. Let's get up to the actual shear. Um, this is a function shear. It's going to say turtle select one. So what it's going to do is it's going to look in its first spot. Uh, if turtle get item count is less or uh, of one, that's this one, is equal to zero. So if this thing breaks, then get shear. Okay, so if we go down to get shear, which is this one, it's going to, uh, the turtle is going to suck down, which sounds weird, but uh, what it's going to do is it's going to look in the chest below it here for for more items so it's going to pull one of these shears out of the bottom uh, area here and put it back in slot one because that's the slot that's already uh, selected it's selecting one and then in, if everything's good if this is greater than one the turtle is going to uh, do place which again is a um, there should be like a turtle use or something, but turtle place is the command you want to give the turtle to actually use the item that's in uh, the slot that you have it using. So, I mean, if it, if it doesn't matter what slot it is, it's just whatever slot selected, it's going to say it's going to try to place that. So place is actually going to use those shears. So it's just going to do that. And then uh, I think I got it on two or three minutes i can't remember 180 seconds of uh wait time lets these sheep regrow and it'll just run and run and run and run and run uh until you restart the server once you start it or you turn them off so what what i am going to eventually do is add uh wireless modems to these guys and then have the ability uh to turn everything off and that will probably be done with a touch screen I just have to, uh, there's a lot involved with doing a touch screen, just setting it all up. So I'll take my time and I'm, I really probably won't do that on program. Just like I didn't do any of this programming on, on, uh, on video because it's just long and, and, uh, kind of dry, very, very dry. So that's, uh, pretty much where we're at with the additional farms. Uh, Buildcraft Robots can kiss my ass. I'm about done with these guys. Uh, a lot of effort goes into making the uh, materials and these guys and then setting them all up. And then they don't freaking do <laughs> anything that I want them to do. So hopefully, uh, and I think I'm running the most current version anyways. But uh, So just kind of a, that's where we're at. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, expect some other stuff coming up. Uh, you can see I've got some quantum link stuff in there. Uh, I'm working on getting the 
the Oceanic Institute hooked up to our ME system because I'm kind of tired of uh, running back and forth getting stuff uh, out of our system. So I should have that hooked up in the next uh, episode if I don't even do it on camera. So I appreciate you guys coming by. Don't forget to uh, toss a like on there. And if you guys haven't watched the... Uh, the, it's called my world i really should have called it magic pack uh which is probably what i'll call it when i do it in the the next season um but if you haven't watched that one that's got some pretty neat stuff on there too it doesn't use any really tech other than maybe some piping but go and check it out don't forget to leave a like and uh, if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh that'll let you know when i do put out a video i'm trying to get uh about three a week or so right now and i've uh, been pretty consistent for the last few weeks anyways so always check check by usually i'm trying for monday wednesday and friday that's what i'm shooting for right now so guys until next time i appreciate you coming by hope you enjoyed don't forget to leave me a comment just drop by and say hi if nothing else until next time i will see y'all later